guys how are you all doing i hope you're all doing fine i am fine too i thank god if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for returning back here thank you for your love and your support guys you are the reason to why i always come back here to share videos on this channel yeah because you give me that energy <laughs> to keep on pushing but if it is your first time here on my channel hello welcome to my channel please before you leave remember to subscribe and when you subscribe youtube automatically is going to turn on that notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you will be the first one to be notified so please make sure you hit that subscribe button so in our today's video guys i am going to be sharing with you a story time actually guys it is a happily ever after of a ugandan lady who found love on online dating site with a guy from romania and i've got two reasons to why i'm sharing this happily ever after first one <laughs> i've been getting your comments on instagram especially asking me bella we want to know what happened to the Ugandan lady and the Romanian guy. One time I was talking of a lady who thought had found love with a guy from Romania, but it went really, really bad. And when you saw that on Instagram, on my Instagram stories, you started asking me, Bella, is it the Ugandan lady? <laughs> we want an update, please, please so that is why i'm here today reason number two to why i'm sharing with you this happily ever love story is for you you is on online dating apps searching for love to learn what happens after finding the one does everything go so rosy or maybe you come across lots of challenges and yes if you come across those challenges how do you overcome them so this video is going to be really interesting and you know guys <laughs> every love story is different we have got something new to learn from every love story and without wasting much of your time let us jump into this video so friends i said it is a happily ever after because I had shared her part one online dating success love story. Yeah, if you remember Brenda's love story, those who did not watch her part one love story, please, please go back. I'm going to put the video here or here or here. So go back, watch that video. And after watching that video, come back here for part two, which is the happily ever after update. <laughs> yeah. So for those who watched part one, we are going to continue from where we stopped in part one. And in part one, we stopped whereby Brenda found love on an online dating site with a guy from Romania. His name is Alex. Alex went to Uganda to meet Brenda for that first time. I always tell you that when you meet in person, finally, <laughs> that's when your relationship becomes a real one yeah last time i did a video and i was telling you you know when you're chatting with someone sometimes it crosses your mind what if we don't meet what if i'm just fantasizing or what if this guy is just fantasizing but when you finally meet in person wow you feel at peace and at that time yes <laughs> you believe that the guy is real and him making all that effort to come to see you it's a tick you know <laughs> so your boxes are ticking ticking he came to meet me yes tick <laughs> yeah so alex did that met brenda in uganda they enjoyed so much and when he was coming back to romania he promised brenda that i am going to invite you to come to romania so that you get to see my life get to meet my relatives see if you like it there <laughs> yeah and this is a very very good thing when a guy has plans it's important not someone just coming to see you and after you have met if you ask this guy what is our next plan he's like i don't know we will see <laughs> you know leaving you there hanging it's not good at all but alex was sure that our next step is for brenda to come and see me and yes guys he fulfilled his promise invited brenda 
to Romania. Brenda went to Romania, enjoyed so, so much. On her first visit, couldn't believe it that finally this guy has really invited me because he paid for everything. Brenda never paid even a coin on that trip. And also, after arriving, give her some pocket money that if you want to buy something, you can just, you know, use the money. Give her a thousand euros. By the end of the day, Brenda tells us even when they could go out, he could be the one to buy her things. So she kept her money. Also went to visit his mother. His mother is so, so sweet and welcomed her very, very well. Every time they could go visit her, she could gift her something plus money on top. 50 euros, 100 euros, 200 euros. Wow, what a good mother-in-law. So Brenda really felt blessed. And if you remember, I posted some of the gifts that the mother-in-law gifted her when she first visited, including a gold necklace or a gold bracelet. I'll check with her and post it here again for you. Yeah, so all went super good. Another question that I asked her was the culture shock. <laughs> if she faced any culture shock in Romania for that first Time. was like Bella oh my god <laughs> whenever we could go out maybe for shopping or we are going out maybe to eat something to a restaurant you know Alex could hold my hand could hug me could kiss me you know <laughs> or sometimes could be touchy and we are in public <laughs> <laughs> so I used to get super super shy about it <laughs> You know, someone kissing you in public, you know, it's not normal in Africa. Africans watching this, you're going to agree with me. So that was her first culture shock. That, I, what is this? <laughs> but later, got used to it. Second, you know, we have heard the voices about Romania. You know, there is racism and all that so i had to ask her that question that how did you feel like being in romania for that first time did you face anything like that she was like bella no everyone was so kind to me you know people smile at me they talk to me even if you know there is language barrier but you see someone talking you know using using the hand gestures and yeah i understand smile back <laughs> Also, in the city where Alex lives, I haven't seen lots of interracial couples. I've came across only two interracial couples, a black woman and a white guy. And another couple was of a black guy with a white woman. Yeah, only those. Though tells us one time was walking around and there were some kids playing, you know, in a playground. Young kids with the age of 10 to 15 maximum so when they saw her they started shouting nigga 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 that was weird you know to her but apart from that never ever faced any racism in romania you guys that are online you know searching for love and maybe right now you're chatting with a guy from romania so that is brenda's experience for that first time another thing she talked about was food tells us romanian food is completely different to ugandan food yeah <laughs> but it is very very delicious also, they've got lots, lots of dishes. There could be a different dish. <laughs> yeah, but the only food that has been a very big problem to her to eat is seafood. <laughs> yeah, octopus and snails. <laughs> <laughs> but that's seafood yeah <laughs> Brenda says no 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 I can't eat that <laughs> but maybe with time she'll get used to that lastly her experience that first visit to Romania tells us when she was at the airport waiting to connect the flight to Romania <laughs> there was a lady next to her so when she came next to the lady the lady tried to hide her bag and <laughs> Brenda was like what the hell <laughs> like why are you hiding your bag <laughs> do you think I'm a thief but anyways she ignored that and yeah that's all so her experience for that first time being in Romania was 
super good stayed for one month and when she was preparing to go back to uganda alex told her next time i want to invite you again but make sure you come with single status certificate so that we can register our marriage here in romania brenda was super super happy and you know time came to an end had to return back to Uganda. They were really sad to say goodbye, but you know, they've got plans. So Brenda kept on holding, hoping onto those plans and left, went back to Uganda. So arriving in Uganda, yes, immediately started preparing her documents, you know, for the single status and everything that was needed for them to get married in Romania. And when all the documents were ready, time came then alex invited her again to romania he paid everything for her trip you know in uganda there is no romanian embassy so if you want a visa you have to go to nairobi so alex sponsored all that he was really really responsible so guys brenda applies for her visa to romania and wanted two months visa because knew within those two months everything is going to be ready for them to get married it was their plan so the time for her to pick the visa came went and luckily got the visa to romania and yes was granted two months time to stay in romania called alex told him he was super super happy <laughs> yeah and traveled to romania this was around christmas time i remember chatting with her you know updating me of how everything is going was super excited you know to see alex again super excited to see snow <laughs> for that first time and you know exchanging the gifts during christmas because that's how europeans do it yeah when it is on christmas day you exchange gifts <laughs> yeah i like that a lot too <laughs> yeah so it was a very wonderful moment for brenda and alex you know to get to spend more time together so the last time that we had talked to brenda it was around christmas and wished each other happy christmas yeah and all that then january she contacts me again and this time around wanted some guidance from me so was like bella you know they gave me two months time to stay here in romania and our plan was to register our marriage here but <laughs> alex is not saying anything <laughs> so i don't know like what to do should i ask him and if i'm to ask him how should i ask i don't want to look desperate or i don't want to look like i don't want to go back home <laughs> yeah so help me out what can i do because time is going and i've got only two months here <laughs> so after reading her message i was like you know what you have to talk talk to him ask him that you told me to come with the letter of no impediment, a single status certificate. What was it for? So that you get to hear his response. Maybe you understood wrongly. <laughs> yeah, so after explaining to you, you will know what to do. She was like, okay, Bella, thank you so much. Time passes and then she comes back again. <laughs> was like, Bella, we talked, but... I really don't know the devil is a liar guys <laughs> yeah because after talking to alex he was like yes the plan was to get married you know to register our marriage and get married but he is scared like he's really really scared of another divorce and to be left alone so brenda was like bella what do you think of this sentence 
Do you see any red flag? And what can I do? And what I really thank God is that Brenda talked to me, <laughs> talked to the right person, because I've got enough, enough experience in these things. <laughs> As if it was someone who didn't have any experience, would have jumped like, it's a red flag, you know? Why is he freaking out? Maybe he has got another woman. Scared of what? <laughs> This guy is a player. Maybe wanted to take your goodies and enjoy time with you, then that's it. <laughs> but no, I did not handle it that way. Guys, the way exist women who have been hurt by men also exist men who have been hurt by women. The way you go to the dating sites and you start chatting with a guy they start asking you for nude pictures or they start, you know, <laughs> that scares you, right? When you meet another guy, you're like, mm, I hope he's not like, you know, the one that did that. Also exist guys that have been on the dating sites and have faced same, same things that you have been facing. So when you come across them, of course, they will not be all that open and some things they will show you clearly that they are scared to do them. They are scared to make the next step due to their past experience. And I'm going to give you some examples so that you get to understand why I'm saying all this. So my first example is of someone who is very close to my husband his friend his best friend yeah went through two divorces and you know when i started doing the social media kind of a thing ladies approach me and be like can you please connect me does your husband have a friend <laughs> don't you have friends and i see maybe a lady is really genuine i really want to help <laughs> so i could talk to my husband your friend is single and you know is well off <laughs> Why can't we connect him to this lady or to my friend? <laughs> then my husband could be like, no, that one does not want to be again in any, any relationship or getting married. It is no longer in his head. He has gone through two divorces and very, very bad, bad divorces is enough. And I'm like, so how does he, you know, survive <laughs> without the goodies? <laughs> then my husband was like, no, that's not a problem. <laughs> Exist women who just accept to be seeing a guy, but no attachments, you know? <laughs> You're not going to be loving each other or anything like that. You just have that relationship based on goodies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So my husband was like, no, that one, just forget about it. Yeah. So some guys, when they go through bad, bad divorces, it makes them be scared of even getting married again. Be like, what if I get married and it's another failure? It's another divorce. You remember when I told you when a man divorces, takes like 10 steps backward in his life yeah so some guys don't want to go through that again that is why you'll find them very scared some will never marry they'll just stay like that or some yes they will marry but they will need time you know to digest things well to get to understand a lady well and also get to gain the trust with these ladies so if you are online you're chatting with a guy i know i talk of these things and you go to the sites apps you come across same same things yeah so if you go there you come across a guy who is divorced and everything is going well you are to get married you see him scared or you see him really taking his time to get to know you <laughs> I know one who dated a guy and he was not proposing at all. She's like, Bella, why? And I'm like, if this guy has gone through a very, very bad divorce in the past, reached to an extent of losing almost everything that he owned, yes, he will take his time. Doesn't want to go through the same, same thing again. 
Keep giving him more time. Observe how he treats you because it is all the combination of everything. It is not that I'm telling you if he's taking his time, give him more time. And maybe this guy doesn't want to do video calls. Maybe this guy sometimes he's talking to you. He closes the phone, you know, weird, weird things of a player. And you say, Bella said I should give him more time. No, <laughs> if you see he's scared to get married, because of his past marriage, <laughs> give him more time. But on the other side, the guy should show you actions that he is really, really interested in you. Note that you see lots of red flags all at once and you keep giving the guy the chance. No, let me hope you understand. My second example is of a lady who does my hair. Yeah, so you know when I go to do the hair, we are women, we talk. <laughs> Yeah, so one time we were talking and she was telling me her story, you know, with her husband, that her husband was a divorced guy, you know, before they met. So when they met, all was good. And this lady is a very, very good Christian, I think from Pentecost, something like that. So told me in my church, you know, where I pray, you can't go with a man in that church if that man is not your husband. So when I started dating my husband, boyfriend at that time, I had to tell him that, you know, yes, I go to church every Sunday. I'm a very, very good Christian and I would like to take you to the church, but I can't take you there because we are not married. <laughs> and that's when the guy freaked out. I was like, what? <laughs> Forget about it. Getting married. I just came out of the divorce, a very bad divorce. And you're talking of marriage. No, 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 no. <laughs> then the lady was like, it's okay. It's not that I'm forcing you to get married to me or what. I was just telling you how things are. But after the Italian guy freaking out, the boyfriend was like, I had to go home, knelt down and prayed to God. Told God, if this man is the one, keep him. But if he is not the one, let him go. Because <laughs> I don't want to get married to the man that is not the one. Yeah, so kept on with her life. And then one day, the Italian guy calls her. Hello, where are you? And then I come at work told her after work, I would like to meet you. We need to talk. She was like, fine, no problem. So after work, they met and guess what? <laughs> so the guy tells her, you know, I've thought about it and I want to know if I am to marry you, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> like your culture and tradition. How do you do things? Cause he is an Italian and the lady is from Ivory Coast. <laughs> So she was like, um, we have the bride price, but I don't know how much it is. So we will have to ask my sister. And she had a sister here in Italy. <laughs> uh, the sister was here for so long and spoke Italian. So they had to go to her sister and her sister explained everything that is to be done for them to get married. He was like, Okay, I agree to everything. I'm going to do everything so that we can get married. Oh my God. God is good, guys. <laughs> yeah, but he was scared. Before he was super, super scared to get married. I come from the bad divorce and thinking of getting married again really made him freak out. The last, last example is of my husband. I told you guys when I shared our How We Met video. When I came here, we talked and I was to go back to Tanzania. My husband, my boyfriend at that time was super scared. Started telling me, I'm scared to lose you. You might go and then find someone who will promise you the world. Then you're going to leave me. <laughs> I was like, no. But he was telling me all that due to what he had gone through in the past. Yeah. Also, this weekend, there is a baby of mine. I know you're here, girl, watching me. <laughs> so I was online and then came across this guy. The guy started talking to her. All was going super good. A guy giving her compliments and all that. Until the guy asked for WhatsApp number so that they can connect on WhatsApp, get to do a video call and see each other. 
So my baby, <laughs> too bad, did not consult me about the guy. And I've been saying, if you are my baby, feel free, ask me. Even if you send me a message and I take a bit long to get back to you, but I will sure get back to you instead of you doing things and later we come to find out you did a mistake so yeah too bad my baby did a mistake did not consult me so she was like no i can't give you my whatsapp number i'm not comfortable yet you know to share the whatsapp number <laughs> and what the guy did blocked her right away she was like oh my god you know at the time all is going well and suddenly the guy blocks you it hurts it really hurts i know you is watching this video you have come across such experience online you know how it feels it really hurts so that's the time she wrote to me and was like bella you can't imagine <laughs> it is sunday and i've been blocked by a guy all was going well that is when I had to go through their messages. She sent me the messages and discovered she made a mistake. In that guy's bio, when I went through it, I came to find out that that guy had gone through a lot, you know, with scammers online, <laughs> women asking money, women not wanting to do video calls, men acting as women, you know, they are men but chatting like a woman and all that. The bio itself was telling me all about the guy. Yeah, so I told my baby, you were supposed to give him the WhatsApp number. Then, after coming to WhatsApp, if he misbehaves, block. You won't lose anything. And I said this, when you start chatting with a guy, everything is fine. He seems to be a good guy. That does not mean he is the one. That does not mean he is your boyfriend already or your fiance. You are just getting to know each other so be patient enough to see how things goes if you are online you have to do the same things all over again and again and again and again until you succeed i know right now you're watching me and you're saying bella you don't know how it is frustrating to be exchanging whatsapp numbers with every guy and you go to whatsapp it goes bad i gave you a tip that if a guy comes, no compliments, nothing, this is my WhatsApp number. If I'm the one, I'm not going to exchange WhatsApp number with such kind of a guy. But if a guy, you know, takes his time to chat with me, gives me compliments, shows me that he read my profile and all that, then he's like, let's exchange WhatsApp numbers so that we can get to see each other on a video call. I won't start thinking, of a guy wanting to see me naked not at all i will first think okay maybe this guy wants to make sure that i am real because you two have met guys you chat all is fine and when it comes to see each other on a video call a guy starts giving you lots of excuses meaning he is fake men too come across that they've been facing that challenge too okay dear beautiful ladies so you will have to keep on exchanging numbers until comes the right guy i am repeating if you are on the dating apps dating sites searching for love you have to do same things all over again and again and again <laughs> like i told you you have to be you know updating your profile you have to be sending messages bella i'm sending messages every day yes you have to do it all over again and again and again and again praying hoping god will bring the right guy don't get tired if you want something you are not supposed to get tired okay <laughs> until you find it <laughs> that's the spirit that i want because i've noticed another thing that i do videos here and sadly some of you caught me wrongly yeah it has reached an extent whereby <laughs> every guy you see it's a red flag you chat a bit you haven't known a guy very well no this guy is a red flag <laughs> 
<laughs> don't do that please 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 take your time study the guy <laughs> even me i'm your coach i've got enough experience but how many times you my babies have come to me with a guy and i tell you give him more time we need more time time will tell you know because <laughs> i know there's some questions very critical questions that you can't ask day one and those questions are important they are the same same questions that will give you the response if the guy is the one or he is not the one but we can't ask him on day one okay that is why i'm telling you you need to give a guy more time to get to know him don't rush to block him don't rush to say no i can't give you my number you are a scammer i'm tired of being asked nude photos i'm tired of being ghosted after exchanging whatsapp numbers with guys no there is no i am tired you want to find love yes you want to get married and have your own family yes do not get tired keep doing it again and again and again till you succeed another of my baby writes to me and is like oh bella this guy is you know like telling me when we meet i'm going to hug you i will kiss you you know i will want to hold your hands bella that's a red flag <laughs> <laughs> actually i've told him i no longer want to communicate with him we better end it there no guys no <laughs> it's not like that <laughs> that shows a guy is really attracted to you okay as long as he's not disrespecting you i repeat don't block the guy don't start saying the guy is full of red flags please please i don't want you to lose a good guy and later regret yeah let us not rush to jump into a conclusion so yeah back to brenda's story i talk to brenda and i tell her yes it is very very true alex is scared you know for another divorce due to what he has been through a guy who is telling you i'm scared to be left alone what does that mean he needs that assurance from you so what you need to do is give him the assurance that is what i told brenda you need to give alex an assurance that hey honey babes my love whatever names you call yourselves <laughs> that i love you so much and i'm not here to play or i'm not here to you know break your heart I'm seriously into this and I'm planning to stay the rest of my life with you. Give him that assurance. There won't be any divorce. Forget about it, you know. Divorce does not exist in my head. Yeah, because that's what I did, guys. When my husband was like, my boyfriend at that time, I'm going to lose you. Someone might take you and promise you the world. <laughs> I told him, no, you won't lose me because I have decided already that I want to be with you. I love you. And to me, that's it. So that assurance, he told me later, <laughs> really made him even more stronger. And he trusted me from that time. Yeah. So that is the same thing that Alex needed. An assurance. It is a simple thing, but it means a lot. So that's what Brenda did talk to him was like to me divorce does not exist if there is true love if we can get along well if we can solve our problems why should we be talking of the divorce so trust me i'm giving you the whole assurance that i love you and only you forever so yes after giving alex the assurance all was fine he understood you know gained her trust <laughs> and yeah they were ready to go register their marriage so when they went to register their marriage <laughs> afro cinema guys <laughs> the documents that brenda had did not have the foreign affairs stamp and for me, when Brenda was telling me, oh, I'm going to prepare the documents and all that, I knew she had the whole information. So I never gave her any tips like do this, follow this step, one, two, three, four. No. So unfortunately, they told her we need these documents to be stamped 
to have a foreign affairs stamp from Uganda and at the embassy in Nairobi. So they had to send all the documents back to Uganda so that they can be stamped, spent lots of money, you know, in those documents. But when the documents came back, sadly the immigration refused to extend her visa so they had run out of time they were very very sad they lost lots lots of money cried they were so down you know but at the end of the day she was supposed to go back to uganda so with this you will agree with me or oh, we are getting a vivid example that interracial relationships are very very expensive plus you really need to love each other very very much due to the challenges that you are going to face <laughs> it is only true love that will save your relationship otherwise you're going to end halfway because if alex never loved brenda that much was not going to accept to keep on losing his money just because of a woman because that's how losers reason <laughs> I'm not going to lose my money just because of a woman. No, 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 no. This is getting out of hands. I've spent lots of money. I'm out of this relationship. He did not do that. He stood by her, was like, we are going to get married no matter what. So yeah, Brenda returned to Uganda and started all over again the process of the documents. Also tells us when she returned back to Uganda, had resigned from her job because knew going the second time to Romania, they're going to get married. So she was not returning back to Uganda. <laughs> yeah, that was a mistake, but it went how it went. So Alex kept on taking care of Brenda too. Sending her money tells us could send every now and then to make sure Brenda has everything that she needs. Also, if money was needed for the documents, for the visa process, because they had to start preparing for another visa to Romania. He paid for everything, guys. This lady is very, very blessed. And this takes me back. When I talked of Romanian guys, I told you, most fantasize a lot and one thing you need to observe while chatting or dating a guy from romania are the finances because when it comes to sweet words they are so sweet they are so romantic and all that but when it comes to they need to invite you they'll start giving you excuses oh i don't have money oh i lost my job if you remember the story i shared here of a ugandan lady who spent 10 million ugandan shillings to go visit a romanian guy and was deported back when she reached at bucharest airport i think you remember that story she was chatting with a romanian guy but a bad romanian guy who was taking advantage of her because the guy never spent anything in that relationship that guy was not financially stable but if we compare that guy we compare alex you can see alex is a serious romanian guy but the other guy was not a serious romanian guy he was a bad a player <laughs> from romania guys who are online i think you learn something here or you get something here if you did not watch that video that I, that I shared of how is it like to date guys from different countries or countries to avoid while you are online another thing before i forget brenda tells us she overstayed two days you know on her second visit to romania but they went to the immigration and the immigration was like no problem we have called at the airport nothing will happen to you when you are going back but brenda arriving at the airport oh 
it was trouble <laughs> they started telling her yes you'll go back to uganda but you are not going to come to romania for a certain period of time like a temporary ban <laughs> she was like no but i did everything legally and also talked to the immigration you can call them and ask i did everything as it was supposed to be done so i am coming back so the guy scared her so so much and when she was preparing for her third visit to romania i was really scared like what will happen at the airport if it's true they had banned her <laughs> yeah so yes time came for her to apply for the visa she applied again went to nairobi and tells us at that time romania was already in a schengen area so the visas people are supposed to wait for at least 21 days to be granted the schengen visa <laughs> yeah but for brenda oh my god it was a miracle she was told to go back after one week but tells us also her boyfriend called on her favor explained everything and even at the interview they asked her why are you going back to romania this is the third time have you found a job in romania do you really work in uganda <laughs> and she was like yes i work they told her no 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 you don't work she was like i work you can call <laughs> Because she presented her work documents, but I won't say this into details. Yeah. <laughs> so they told her all that. She was like, no, I work and actually I'm going to Romania to get married. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, they told her the date to go back and luckily was granted the visa to go to Romania. Called Alex. Alex was super, super happy, excited. And now they have everything in order for them to get married the day for her to travel to romania came and yeah reaching at the airport the guy started telling her stay aside you know you overstayed two days the last time you visited <laughs> she had to explain and the guy was like you know you have got only two days in romania <laughs> on your current visa you can't stay longer she was scared but when she arrived in romania they went to the immigration they told her no nothing is wrong with your visa it is valid you can stay she was at peace and happy went registered their marriage but also tells us at the registry again another for cinema came <laughs> they told her that they don't accept the certificate that she brought they were the copies they told her wanted to see the original copies and those original copies of the certificates and all documents that were needed were supposed to be stamped at the foreign affairs in Uganda and Nairobi. So what Brenda decided to do had to call the brother. They sent the documents to the brother. The brother did everything, left his job and everything to help Brenda. Actually, Brenda was like, if it wasn't for my brother, I don't know what I could have done. I really thank my brother very, very much. So the brother helped them, did everything and sent the documents and they were still in time. So that's when they registered the marriage. And after registering their marriage, they were given a date. And when they were still waiting for the date, took her out, went, tried the engagement rings. Then she came to me, was like, Ben, I don't know. <laughs> we have just tried the engagement rings. I don't know, maybe he wants to engage. I don't know, but I'm going to update you what happens. I was like, I think it is a proposal. <laughs> yeah, so after some time, she wrote to me again, was like, yes, Bella, I'm engaged. <laughs> yeah, I shared this news on my Instagram stories. I'm going to put the photo here. When you see that photo, you will recognize it. If you follow me on Instagram, at African Bella. The big day came and yay! <laughs> Wedding bells, they got married. And the wedding consisted of few friends and families on Alex's side. I know right now you're like, Bella, what happens to Brenda's side? <laughs> so, yes, they are married now, legally. It was a court wedding. And then after, they are going to do a church wedding in Uganda with Brenda's family and Alex's family. Guys, I will update you on that 
when it happens right now we should just say congratulations to you brenda and alex on your marriage may god protect your marriage you keep living your happily ever after to you <laughs> Another important question that I asked Brenda was how did your family take it? Because we see they didn't attend the wedding, she got married and they were in Uganda. She was like, at first, my dad did not like the whole idea. But later on, I explained and he understood and blessed as <laughs> and i was like i'm glad your dad understood because you know when it comes to an interracial relationship sometimes you plan things this way and they turn out to be a different way so what is important is that you and your partner love each other very very much and you eventually get to live together start a family that's all that both of you want i guess so <laughs> you should first focus more on that and other things will follow don't stress yourself very very much like I remember there is a story which went bad. I told you about it in a bit, but I will try to talk to either of the couple, anyone that feels like we should share it with you so that you can learn from it. It came to the point where they were supposed to decide on the wedding. And the guy was like, I want a small wedding for now because I will spend lots of money, you know, to take you and your kid to my country, you know, pay all those tickets. So I cannot afford a very big wedding for now. But on the lady's side, wanted a big wedding, you know, by fire, by force sadly there was no one to guide her i came to know this later so after the guy telling her not to a big wedding now we will do later maybe after coming to my country we have lived and i have saved enough money come back to your country make a big wedding the lady was like it's either now a big wedding or it's over so the guy was like if that is the love you had for me then i agree it's over and later when she came to talk to me i made her understand and she was like oh my god started begging for forgiveness from the guy but the guy said no i loved you i didn't expect you to tell me it's over simply like that as i'm talking right now the guy is married to a nigerian lady yeah they got married april this year because sometimes i chat with a guy it's the lady that connected me to the guy and the lady too sometimes chats with me luckily recently told me that she found a very good good guy from a certain country if it is a success story it will come here too i'm telling you all this not to gossip for you guys to learn okay when it comes to an interracial relationships there's some things you just need to sit down and reason don't want to copy everyone or what you see on tiktok on social media you see a very beautiful couple online they met the guy you know proposed with a very big ring an expensive one and then after they make a very big wedding an expensive one too and you are there dating a guy a guy has come to see you maybe invited you then tells you i want you to come and we get married in my country if it is a big wedding we will do it later to your country let me save more you're like no you are poor no you don't love me i want a wedding like the one i saw with that couple that is wrong and when it comes to your relationship never compare it with anyone because it will never be the same just like these fingers you see they are not the same <laughs> not so it is the same as when it comes to a relationship they will never be the same my own marriage will never be the same as your own marriage that lady's relationship even if they met online even if they are from the same country it won't be the same as you totally different how many times have i told you this is your life stop wasting your time comparing yourself to other couples <laughs> no even if god brings a man won't bring exact man 
like the one you see on social media or on YouTube of any interracial couple that you are following. Let me hope these words are of a help to you guys. So even on Brenda's side, I think you have seen how this relationship has gone, how it started till the end. Alex spent lots, lots of money on the tickets, go and return, spent lots, lots of money to take care of her, spent lots, lots of money on the visa process. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. Lots of money on the documents. Brenda was going to be crazy to cry and be like, I want a big wedding in Uganda or the big wedding or it's over. <laughs> She was going to be crazy. <laughs> Not under my own guidance. And Brenda is a smart girl. <laughs> She's very, very clever, intelligent, and a good woman. I'm saying Brenda is blessed to find Alex, but Alex too is really blessed. A very beautiful, loving, intelligent lady like Brenda. So yes, guys, we have heard Brenda got married and all that, but I had that curious question that I wanted to know from Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember she asked me about it, so I had to bring it again because we did not come to a closure <laughs> for me to know what she decided or what they decided on. Yeah, and this is something most of you have been asking me about it, especially you guys that are in a relationship right now and you are planning to get married. Yeah, <laughs> the prenup agreement. Yeah, so I asked Brenda which agreement did you guys sign this can be somehow delicate and very very uh private but i am glad brenda was so open to share this with us was like bella i signed the community of properties actually it is alex that took his time to explain everything to me so that i can understand okay <laughs> yeah he chose the community of properties brought a lady a translator to translate to me because the documents are in romanian so i didn't understand had to bring that translator to explain to me word per word then he talked explained and the lady could explain to Brenda and asked Brenda, do you agree with the community of properties? Brenda was like, yes, I agree. Oh my God. She's so, so blessed. I'm telling you guys, I've seen this prenup agreement, how it brings a fraction. It brings fights between couples whereby you find a guy wants a separation of properties and the lady wants community of properties agreement <laughs> yeah and i advised you if you are a black woman you know what to do when it comes to that agreement and i was really happy how it went on brenda's side so yes guys that was the happily ever after <laughs> to you who would like to know the name of the dating site where Brenda met Alex, they met on Afro Introductions. And I mentioned this in her part one online dating success love story. So now we go to her advice. The advice that she gives to you all that are on the dating sites, dating apps, searching for the one. And her advice number one, cause I asked her to talk about it, is of a lady who is on online dating sites, searching but scared to give a chance to a guy from Romania due to the horrible stories we have been hearing about Romanian guys. So Brenda was like, you know, in every country exist good men and bad men. Yeah, even Alex told her that Romanian guys, Romanian people are not easy. <laughs> so it's up to you to observe a guy you are chatting to. If he is a good Romanian guy or he is a bad Romanian guy, but tells you to give them a chance, get to know them, observe them, compare their words and their actions if they match if they match good so guys brenda's last advice was like bella it always pains me a lot when i see ladies being scammed online especially the failed online dating love stories that you share 
on your channel because when you join these dating sites and apps there is a notification do not send money to anyone why do people ignore that she was like normally or 90 percent of black african women when they are dating black African men, and for example, this black boyfriend of yours ask you for a financial help, you're not going to give him that financial help. I was like, we are always stingy with our black African boyfriends. So if we are that stingy to our black African boyfriends, why aren't we stingy when we start dating these white guys online? You met a guy online, you start trusting him, you ask him for a video call, he calls you, but the camera is facing another side, you're not even seeing him, or some will give you excuses for not making, you know, that video call. <laughs> you will arrange to meet, you will never meet, but again, they ask you for money, you give them your money. Why can't you behave or act the same as you could have acted while dating a black guy. If you are stingy on a black guy, be stingy too with this stranger that you just met online. So I was like, please, please, let us all be careful. Let us not give our money out just like that. So dear friends, let me hope you enjoyed this video. You learned a lot. This video was of a big help. If it was and you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it to your friends, family, everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something. Please comment below what you think about this video. I would like to know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you haven't subscribed, can I ask you a question? What are you still waiting for? Join the family and thank you for subscribing. <laughs> if you haven't watched my other videos or my previous videos, please go and watch them. You are going to learn a lot. I love you so much, guys. You're always here in my heart. Let us meet in my next video. Ciao, ciao. Mwah.